Hello and welcome to another group SFT tapping event. This one is coinciding with the closing ceremony of the Paris Olympics. We are calling this one Beyond Borders. I'm Marvin Schneider. And I'm Jen Ward. Hi, everybody. We have the uh, real particular intention with this is all the energy and the goodwill of the Olympics, instead of closing that down and taking all that energy back to your, you know, taking your marbles and going home. We're basically using that energy for higher purpose and all the energy that's fueling freedom in the world is this energy is donated to that cause in a way. And of course, a couple of days ago, we did another group tapping session called Celebrating the Collective. It was all about harnessing the passion and purpose and creativity and inspiration of the collective and channeling all of that into higher consciousness. And so that was coinciding with the running of the Olympics. And now we're doing this tapping event coinciding with the closing ceremony. It is literally, as we're recording this, the closing ceremony is taking place, Jen. Uh, you said something else, though, off camera, and it's kind of really important, is all of the energy uh, in the closing ceremony or the Olympics and then the closing ceremony is directed towards uh, rather than just sort of dissipating and going nowhere, it's being directed towards, um, you know, change, particularly in America, at, at a political level. Do you want to talk? about that for a second yes yeah, so you see a big wave of positive energy in america right now with the election the good guys the people who are for the people are gaining momentum people are coming out and and droves to these rallies and you can feel the goodwill you know you can feel it so this energy of all the blood sweat and tears of all these athletes instead of being harnessed by their local governments to like just lift up their egos or whatever, it's going to be used to infuse even more upliftment into this, this rally for good, because this affects the whole world. Let's face it. If we got a despot back into office, it would, it would affect all the world. So it's, it's behooves all the world that, um, freedom rings in america of course it's not only america i mean even in the uk and australia we do have uh extreme right wing um you know white supremacist fascist <laughs> yeah um things going on as well so uh but you know look the other thing that you said is that um a lot of humanity is sort of focused on the olympics and the aspiration of the Olympics and uh, that energy rather than closing down in the closing ceremony is being directed towards, you know, forward momentum. So it's, it's like, you know, it, this is not something that just happens once every four years. It's an ongoing process and, you know, uplifting all of 8 billion people into higher consciousness is an ongoing thing. You can't sit on your laurels. You've got to do, you've got to do your bit. Right. And you bring up a good point when when a bunch of people are focused on the same time and space, it creates a portal. So, so much of the world's attention on the closing of the Olympics ceremonies is a portal in itself. So we're using that portal for to infuse higher consciousness into humanity instead of just, you know, letting it waste away and dissipate. And of course, we have with us in the studio all of our regulars who are helping in this with this tapping event. Thank you very much for joining us again. It's uh, well, it's four a.m. in our morning. Hopefully, it's uh, a better time frame for you guys. Um, this event is called Beyond Borders, uh, so you can take that a couple of ways. Literally, Beyond Borders, meaning we are all fundamentally citizens of the world. And so we're going beyond nationalism. I think that's kind of really important because there is a bit of a resurgence of nationalist ideology going around the world. Uh, we need to break that down because ultimately we are part of a uh, interconnected collective. 
that's one aspect. Jen, you had another aspect in thinking about beyond borders, uh, mm-hmm. and it's beyond just the borders of the human physical form. Do you want to talk about that for a second? Yeah. So if I have this thing, if you want to reach a goal, you you intend to overshoot the goal. So if you want to get rich, don't think millions, think billions. So you overshoot the goal. So with these taps, we're overshooting the goal of just uplifting humanity in the linear realms by by addressing things in the non-linear world that a lot of people hold sacred, like a relationship with trees, concern about you know being from another planet. They're not an aspect of the linear world per se, mainstream, but they are in the hearts and minds of a lot of people. So we're harnessing those intentions as well and incorporating those into the taps. Speaking of which, we are doing a tapping event. Can you just talk a little bit about SFT tapping? We've done a lot of these events recently uh, where we haven't really talked that much about the technique of SFT tapping. So do you want to just say something about that? Because you invented the SFT tapping protocols, so there's no one better to talk about SFT tapping than you, frankly. Well, yeah, it's based on a tapping that, you know, other people do tap and that's not SFT. Well, I and I started out doing a tapping that wasn't SFT, but it didn't go far than that. It only went to the body and what makes you feel good. And it didn't incorporate the collective and the macrocosm and all the ways we're interconnected. So what we've done with the SFT tapping is use uh, a tried and true tapping protocol that a lot of people use. And we've named it the spiritual freedom technique. It's not just the emotions, not just the body, but spiritually. That encompasses everything on all levels of consciousness. You got the physical, physiology and the physical, astral and emotional, causal and past lives, mental, and all that goes with that, and the ego. The etheric realm, which is this realm beyond the, the mental realm and pure positive realms. Now, a lot is not known about the etheric realm, but what happens in the etheric realm is that issues, issues that affect people in the physical they will stay in that that realm in a formless state meaning you can't grab onto them mentally or emotionally it's almost like in a um, powdered state it's almost like if you have a fire you get rid of the fire but there's still smoke in the room so these issues you can put out the an issue and distinct extinguish it but the Issues can stay in a non-mental, causal, astral form in the etheric realm and then settle back down into the bodies. So um, I don't know of anyone else who gives that understanding of the etheric realm, but it's really important to address things on the etheric realm, which is what we do as well. So what we do is we use the brain, we tap in the ba- the brain, which which triggers the ponds of the brain and sends out an intention. Now, everything that you you think and say sends out an intention to the universe. But unfortunately, lots of times they're very negative, like, oh, I'll never get a job. You'll never get this. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so depressed. Allah. We train not to be effective. But this is taking that same mechanism and honing it to put out the most positive, uplifting, direct intentions and tapping it into your body so they put that intention above all the bitching and moaning that you do. And then you set it into the heart and then you set it into the body. So that's what we're doing with these taps. So mechanically, each one of these affirmations, and we've got a bunch of them, uh, repeated three times while tapping on the top of the head. In other words, programming the brain, the 3D printer to pay attention, a fourth time while continuously tapping on the chest and a fifth time while continuously tapping on the abdomen. One of the other unique things about SFT tapping and your protocols, Jen, because you did actually create these, is um, 
ending all of these taps with a phrase, in all moments. Can you talk about that for a second and how that then uh, overcomes the ego, which is the real, in a lot of ways, the last frontier uh, to transcending? So when you say in all moments, you're not addressing just what's happening in the present because a lot of, most of what's happening in the present is a direct um, reflection of what's happened in past lifetimes. And, and a direct reflection of what's happening with other people and what's happening in their makeup. So when you add the statement in our moments, it's not only addressing it in the present, no, it's addressing it in, in all moments in your Akashic records, past, present, and future, but also in whoever you're dealing with as well. So it's hard to make a shift in consciousness if the other person is going to be stuck in, their, in what their belief is, and they're going to hold you into something negative. But when you say, we release being trapped in our moments, you release being trapped by this person, by this person, by this person, and then you're not trapped in their Akashic records anymore and in their makeup anymore. So it's f total freedom for everyone involved. Yeah, and you often mention that one of the unique aspects about your tapping protocol is the the way that it can bypass the ego, uh, because the ego is uh, it's it's a very cunning. I was going to say beast, but it's a very cunning aspect of the human experience. The way I I describe the ego, and this is the best way to describe it is anyone who's had a teenage child. You love the teenage child, you do everything to, to empower this teenage child, but then they get to an age where they think that they know more than you. They start rolling their eyes when you talk and they start to belittle you. This is the same thing as the ego. The ego thinks that it knows more about you than you do. So it starts to um, take away your power. It starts to like um, take over. And it'll prevent you from having experiences that aren't about its control. So, so these taps, as much as they help the individual um, get empowered, if they have a strong ego, the ego is going to make them fight them. They can't say those statements. They'll resist doing the work. They'll think, oh, Jen's just a crackpot. Whatever it is, that's the ego preventing you from being empowered. And oh, by the way, society has its own ego it deals with. It's called the universal mind. And that's really tough because a lot of people who think they're so spiritually enlightened, I worship the ego if they think that the universal mind is the highest aspect of beingness, because it's not. And there's a thing that happens with people who are awakening They've been lied to in so many circles, in so many ways. They think that if they go far enough, it means they're going to separate from their consciousness, meaning their atoms are going to scatter to the universe and they no longer exist as a um, being. That's a lie. Because frankly, my atoms sc scatter to the universe all the time and I have experiences not only on this planet, but all over the lower worlds. And it doesn't separate you from your consciousness. That's a fear tactic of the universal mind. And another technique of the universal ego is to make you worship it, like thinking that mind is God. It's not. And once you stop knowing there's always another level, always another level of growth, once you stop, at one level and you think you've made it you've just been had because it keeps expounding and keeps getting more empowered hmm. all right well uh we are using sft tapping to uh assist eight billion people to uh raise up in consciousness and channel the energy that was harnessed during the olympics in a positive direction towards your own empowerment 
And then when 8 billion people uh, experience the same joy, love, abundance, freedom, health, success, that's what we call universal empowerment. You often use the phrase joy, love, abundance, freedom, health, success, and you've got about 26 or 28 other descriptors uh, for a state of consciousness. The interesting thing is that as much as we repeat those uh, key phrases, the interesting thing that we're observing at the moment is that the whole Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh campaign is now very much focused in tapping into the joy, um, which is kind of interesting because when you see in mainstream discourse taking on some of the ideas that we're promoting here, uh, it's very gratifying to see. And by the way, I think it is uh, fundamentally important that joy does get reinfused into uh, the discourse of the collective because, frankly, for a long time, um, there's been a distinct lack of it. But that's okay because the, the, the learning curve is there, but you see it in the rallies when Walt, I love him, he reminds me of, a comedian, he's just fun to watch, no matter what he's saying. There's a um, famous message by Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers was a children advocate for children in America, very kind and, and wonderful. He had this um, statement. He told children, when there's, when there's danger or something happens, look for the helpers in the world and, and go to the helpers. And they will help you feel safe and, you know, take care of you. So someone pointed out that Tim Waltz is one of those helpers. So, so yeah, society needed a helper and here he is. Do you see what's going on here, babies? So we never interfere with anyone's freedom of choice or whatever they want to do. But if someone is going to abuse the privileges of accountability, they're going to do it without affecting everyone else. So it's basically letting all those who ha are having a temper tantrum of power mongering mm -hmm. sit in their room and and you know burn off all their energy themselves. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So you know, if you ensconce them in their own personal microcosm and let them just see in their own little you know internal whatever it is that they need to work out their own personal issues because that's really what it is. Uh, you know, it's a group of individuals who just have a whole bunch of issues that they need to work out. But the best thing is if they work that out without affecting the other, you know, 8 billion people of the collective, because we are all interdependent. And so uh, I like the idea of, uh, you know, in ensconcing those in their own little personal microcosm. One of the other things that I uh, take from a lot of what Tim Walsh is saying is, you know, the vice presidential nominee on one side of the ticket, at least, is the um, resonates with me and a lot of Australians, to be honest, is this idea of mind your own damn business. It's it's such a common sense thing. I don't know why it it's just right in front of your face. Why hasn't it occurred to someone to say it at that level before? Because those with grievances, like those who wrote the 2025 um, whatever it is, manifesto, and want to enact it, the only thing they have going for them is that they they met each other and they came into agreement with this nefarious agreement, and they're trying to use the agreement between them to derail all of humanity. And so when you take your own empowerment back, these individuals aren't able to hijack you, right? But you got to know what's going on. So in energy, we know what's going on, and we're addressing it in energy so it doesn't have to take up a lot of your um, your daily energy. It doesn't have to be a part of your daily routine. Yeah. Uh, removing all the engrams and muscle memory of cruelty and revenge reminds me of tapping into the uh, and healing the original story of Cain and Abel. Absolutely. And so if if you remember about 
it seems like yesterday, but it was about a year, a year and a half ago, right at the uh, forefront of the Israel-Palestine conflict, we did uh, a whole series of taps to heal the original um, conflict of Cain and Abel. And there's a lot of that in here. There's a lot of revenge and retribution that just that tap alone will just kind of dissipate. So, yeah, pay attention, folks, um, because, you know, we're addressing, well, human experience, collective issues at a very subtle level. And the, the, the thing, and I've said it many times, the thing is this, if these issues are easily solved in the physical realms, they would have been solved a long time ago. But, you know, we're doing it right here, right now. This is about the only way to do it. And um, we've got a group of people on this Zoom call that regularly come together and help you, all of the 8 billion people, actually lay the foundation to raise into higher consciousness. It would just be, um, you know, it would be great if, you know, 8 billion people just get on board and get going with this. Babies, that's awesome. So, you know, we talk about stuff amongst ourselves, you and I, but I boiled it down to Cain and Abel, one being Judaism, one being Muslim, right? So let's just do the attack now. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. Cain and Abel reunite in brotherhood in all moments. That tap is a great example of going beyond borders, not yes. national borders, but borders of uh, mental construct and form. Yep. You took the words right out of my mouth, babies. It's a way to refine the vibratory rate. So we are acting at a more subastral realm, which has more promise and hope of interacting with other beings. So the reason why Earth is so isolated now is because of the density of its vibration. As long as there's war on a planet, why would any other species out there want anything to do with us? We're assholes right now. So we have to stop being assholes so that we can interact with other planets. So Therese has had, an, um, since she's been doing the tabs for years, she's started to have communications with Sasquatch. And it's not like people think, but she is very much engaged with these beings. So she came to me a couple of years ago and she she had these this experience that she'll tell you about and she has pictures to share. The Therese. Thank you. So yes, it was uh it was on my birthday a few years ago and we went into the woods, a place you recommend, and um you know, I was, I had no intention of looking for Sasquatch and they weren't on my mind. Um, but I, they, I do communicate uh, telepathically. I have an affinity to them and a love for them. And this, uh, this work that you're doing here and that we all are doing is not just for humans because this picture is the, that we're going to see were taken four years ago and I have never seen them since. I thought they were lost this morning. I happened to look on Jim Mike's phone and there they are. And so I sent them to you because it must be safe because, you know, Jen, I don't speak much about them. It's I kind of guard their privacy and location and, you know, um, but I know that this is having an effect and making it safer for, you know, all beings to be seen. So anyway, with that, we went into for a walk. So uh, we decided to go off the main path suddenly and we're kind of, I just had this nudge to go down this path. And as you see in front, there is a branch completely bent over and I was very curious and I was guided. Since then, I, I know that 
um, Sasquatch can, can guide you in the woods. They just know how to move things in space and get you to go places if that's meant to be. So anyway, I wandered down to this branch that really caught my attention. And then I went from the thick side over to the thin side, the far side. And I took and I came upon these words uh, carved into the branch. Jen. <laughs> so it was like, um, so, you know, I, it was just such a confirmation that, uh, you know, this is truly remarkable energy work that, that we are, we all get a chance to do. And um, I'm so grateful, you know, to reconnect with this, this tribe, you know, and through this, this work. And I'm also really grateful that the earth's vibrations are changing you know, to make it safe. So the first photo that you were showing us, um, that was a bit of a way show for you, I think, that then led you to the discovery of the carving. And so what do you take from all of this? What, what's, what's it telling you? They are aware of the work that Jen is doing, that we are doing, and that they are aware of the shifts and, uh, you know, I know there were personal messages for me, but it was way more about, you know, um, the energy work. Does that make sense, Jen? And I mean, it's... It's surreal for me to be me. I don't know how other people think. I'm just, I just know that this work is all encompassing and we're doing it for humanity and, you know, the... The personal, the personal, it's not even a sacrifice, the personal um, consumption of this work is why me and Marvin are together and, and knowing all of you is, is an honor and a privilege that you would stick with it because a lot of people can't. A lot of people find what I do and say, oh, she's amazing, wow, she helped me so much. And then they get derailed by the ego. The fact that you guys haven't gotten derailed by the ego and have stuck through it. And I know it's not easy. We do a lot of these tasks. So that's that's humbling for me. It, it was surreal also for me. It wasn't some message that I took in through the mind. It was um, kind of encouragement to keep going. And um, that's sort of how I took it. And it's um, over the years, you know, it has changes its meaning and i mean you know i didn't just say oh the sasquatch you're talking to me it kind of like over time you know kind of revealed itself more and more over time does that make sense yeah so ever since i got my um, massage therapy license at the very beginning of my career in that and moving into energy work i've had people over and over and over say i was meditating i was praying i was like asking God for help. And then you came into you came into my thoughts as like a hope and stuff. So I've gotten that over and over again. So it's so surreal because okay, it happens once, it happens twice, but it happens a lot. So it's interesting to do the work and be in all about the work and not about these little sensational little um, sidebars. If you like this content and you appreciate the work that we're doing to uplift all of humanity and to help heal your body, mind, and soul, please consider becoming a Genuine Healing premium content subscriber. Simply jump onto the Genuine Healing website, genuinehealing.com with a J, and click on the purchase button on the top menu. Scroll down, there's a premium content option. Click on that, sign up. It's a simple monthly plan for $20 a month, and you will have access to all of the premium content that we put up on the Genuine Healing website. We look forward to catching you next time, and bye for now.